studio, it's uh, being taught by Debbie Dower. In our York studio, it's being taught by Nicole Miller. And I'm not sure who's teaching it in Harrisburg yet, but it will be available in all three studios depending on where you are. So if that's something you're interested in, it's a two hour asana class. I believe there will be some time for discussions, intention setting, manifestation, all sorts of wonderful things. So that is a $40 workshop if you're interested. I can get you more details or point you in the direction of where those details are to be had after class. Let's do the thing, 60 minute journey into power. Go ahead and take child's pose. So prone position, chest to the mat. Take your knees super wide and bring your toes to touch behind. Right away, start to integrate into your space. Coming from brain to body, outside to inside. And now here on your mat, feel the textures beneath you. Notice the heat on your skin and start to build your breath right here. Welcome, Allison. Thank you for joining us. So we do in this style of yoga, we practice ujjayi breath. Start to build that here, filling up your lungs completely on every inhale until you can't inhale anymore. Notice that pause. And then empty it all out until you can't empty anymore. There's no air left. And notice that pause. Add in that slight constriction toward the back of your throat, moving your tongue back. So on your exhales, it starts to sound like you're intentionally fogging up a mirror. And we'll use this breath as an anchor. So build your volume till you can hear it. And then start to listen for your neighbor's breath. Add yours to theirs. And then as we start to build here with the volume that we can hear and also the volume moving in and out of our lungs, we use the breath as the anchor to the present as that thing that's happening right now that we can always come back to. Take one more full breath here. Feel the lift between your shoulder blades. Exhale it out. Take downward facing dog. So our body's here in that big upside down V shape. Go ahead, walk out your dog. Take any movement that you need to start making those creaks and cracks happen. Whatever you need to brush away the cobwebs. And then right here, add your movement to the breath. So on the inhale, feel a lift somewhere. Maybe it's the heels lifting to the ceiling. On the exhale, pull in and press down. Nice, two more breaths like that. On the inhale, lift. Exhale, pull in. Last time, fill up. Empty out, feet to your hands, halfway lift. Rag doll. Pull the pit of your belly all the way in and up. You know, you've got that big C-shaped curve in your spine. Take a sway side to side. Now let your head drop. Let the shoulders round forward. Let go of anything you came in here with and don't want to leave with. Let that fall off of your back right now. Press down through your feet and on your next inhale, rise all the way to stand. Extended mountain reach up, look up. Hands at heart center. You decide here on your I am statement for the night. I am strong. I am focused. I am whatever keeps you motivated to stay here. And we'll seal those intentions with one ohm together. Breath in. Um, inhale, extended mountain. Exhale to fold. Halfway lift, create that long flat back and fold. Extended mountain, reach up, look up. Fold as you exhale. 
Halfway lift, fill your lungs and fold. Last one here, extended mountain, press down, reach up. Fold on your exhale, find your emptiness at the bottom. Nice half lift, chaturanga, step or hop back. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Let's sink our breath together here. Inhale, blow it out. Two more, fill up and empty. Last one, fill, empty out, feet to hands, halfway lift, fold, extended mountain, pull your front ribs into center as you get tall. Nice, fold, halfway lift, chaturanga, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, three breaths in, and out. Two more, fill up and empty. Just like that, one more. Bend and hover, step or jump forward, halfway lift, fold. Extended mountain, look up between your fingers, fold. Halfway lift, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog breath in and empty. Lift your heels and empty out. Last time, lift up, bend and hover. This time, hop forward, feet to hands. Nice. Half lift, fold, extended mountain, fold. Halfway lift, chaturanga, step or hop back. Upward facing dog, Downward facing dog, breath in and out. One more here, fill and empty, feet to hands, halfway lift, fold. Chair pose, sink down, reach high, fold. Halfway lift, chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog, right side warrior one. Inhale as you rise, get to the pause. Chaturanga on your exhale. Get to that pause at the bottom. Nice, up dog, down dog, left side. Reach all the way up, receive it. Chaturanga, blow it out. Upward facing, downward facing dog. Big breath in. Side out. One more fill up and empty. Feet to hands, halfway lift. Fold. Chair pose, one breath. Fold. Halfway lift. Chaturanga, find your pause at the bottom. Up dog, down dog. Warrior one, right side. Take your fingertips up, chest up. Chaturanga, upward facing, down dog, left side, lunge deep, reach high, chaturanga, upward facing, downward facing dog, breath in and out, one more fill, empty like you mean it, feet to hands, half lift, fold. Chair pose, last sun B, fold, half lift, chaturanga, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, warrior one, right side, step through on the pause, inhale, rise, chaturanga, upward facing, down dog, step the left foot forward right away, inhale, rise, Chaturanga on your exhale. Upward facing, down dog. Nice breath in and out. Lift your right leg up behind you. Press it past the back of your mat. Press down into both hands equally and then down into each knuckle. So if I were to come around and try to pluck your fingers up off the mat here, I should have a difficult time doing it. Nice. Bend your knee. Open your hip. 
stay here or flip your dog. Those of us flipping feed on 12 o'clock right away. Yeah, so everyone bring your toes just a little bit closer. So your knees are tracking straight out of your hips. One more breath, both hands down, side plank, right side. Create space here by expanding your chest and upper back. How much space can you get between your shoulders? One more breath, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Big breath in, empty out, lift your left leg up behind. Press it back, take all the flexion out of your lifted knee. Yeah, so if there were a yogi or a wall behind you that you wanted to knock down, press your foot back like you were about to accomplish that. Bend your knee, open your hip, stay or flip. Take your gaze past your fingertips. Yeah, and then start to reach for it. Maybe there's a wheel there or just the suggestion of one right between your shoulder blades. Can you retract your left shoulder onto your back a little more? Nice. Last breath right here. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Big breath in. Exhale it out. Step or jump feet to hands. Halfway lift. Fold. Chair pose. Stay here. Take your drishti between your fingertips. And I'll take your drishti past your fingertips. Is there something on the ceiling that you can look for every time we get here? One more breath, get long and tall. Fold. Halfway lift. Chaturanga. Up dog. Downward facing dog. Crescent lunge, right side. Take up a ton of room here from the front of your mat to the back. Now come down even further in your lunge so far that you can start to feel the stretch all the way from your back of your leg into your hip crease on the left side. Front ribs pull into center here to support the back bend. Go up, look back. One more breath. Hands to heart center, twist to your right. Press your hands together here, the whole palm of your hand, all of your fingers. Now bring your thumbs back towards your chest. Make a connection there to really open up your shoulders. Nice, one more breath in to lengthen. Stay for your twist. Back to crescent lunge. Warrior two, sink down low. 90 degrees in your front knee. And then notice that we've got the knee tracking straight over the middle of the toe. So Mariel and everyone, take your knee just a little bit more to the right. Now almost if you wanna press out into my hand. Nice, right there. Now press down in your heel. Flip your front palm, reverse your warrior reach all the way back. Extended side angle, bring your fingertips down to your mat. And then you choose here down to the mat to a block. Maybe your elbow stays on your knee. Whatever you need here to create a strong foundation so you can press down and then lift through both sides of your body. One more breath. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Big breath in. Exhale it out. Left side crescent lunge. Set up your back foot so the big toe mound and the baby toe mound have the same amount of pressure. Nice. Here we want the heel reaching up for the ceiling. Find all that length through both sides of your body. 
and then lunge down even more. Keep your knee directly over your ankle. One more breath in to get tall. Hands to heart center, twist left. Use your hands here, whether they're staying in together or maybe the arms open. Press the outside of your bottom arm against the outside of your thigh. Use that leverage to open the chest even more. Can you pull that top arm back just a little bit more? Nice. Lengthen on your inhale. Twist it out on the exhale. Inhale, crescent lunge. Warrior two. Sink low so that both sides of your body are light here. Yeah, and then the more we stack shoulders right over hips, the less our muscles have to do. Lift the front of the belly button up towards your sternum. Nice. Flip your front palm. Reverse your warrior one breath. Extended side angle. Fingertips to the mat or a block. And then look down. Notice your knee here traveling straight over your middle toe. So for most of us, that front knee wants to collapse in a little bit toward the center of the mat. Press it out. Nice. And then one more breath. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Full breath in. Exhale it out. Feet to your hands. Halfway lift. Fold. Chair pose. Sit and stay. Sit low. You know how low you get for the twist, so get there right away. Nice. Hands to heart center. Rotate to your right. Hands can stay here at heart center, pressing in. If you've got a bird of paradise, a side crow, something else you want to add here, you go for it. Press through your heels. Nice. Sit one inch lower and lift your chest one inch higher. One more breath in. Stay for the twist. Back to chair, fold fingers to toes, forward fold. Take your peace fingers, wrap them around your big toes. And then notice here what that happens with your hips and your pelvis in these forward folds. You kind of feel that closing of the front of the pelvis and the opening in the back. Little bend in your knees. Nice. Release your toes. Chair pose. Sit down. Reach high. Hands to heart center. Twist to your left. Stay here for a breath or two and then take that on. Your bird of paradise, your side crow. Whatever needs to happen on this side for this part of the sequence to work for you. We're going for vitality. So what makes you feel vital? Bigger breath. One more in. Exhale it out. Back to chair. Fold. Palms to toes. Forward fold. Gorilla pose. Bring your toes as close to your wrists as they can get and bend your knees a lot. And if you can start to feel here, that same thing in the pelvis, the front of the pelvis closes. Back of the pelvis opens. You might even take your heels a little bit wider to really create that in your body. Release your toes, crow pose. Crow, goddess. If you want to tip your crow into another inversion, take it on. Wrists parallel to the front of your mat. Yeah, and then as you set up, really spread your fingertips apart and press those down. If there's one foot in the air, maybe try out the other foot. If both feet are in the air, can they come together? 
Nice. One more breath wherever you're at. Step or hop back, chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Full breath in. Exhale it out. Move your feet to your hands. Halfway lift. Fold. Extended mountain all the way at the top of your mat. Take eagle pose on your right. Right arm under, right leg over. Have a seat. Press down in the big toe mound of your standing foot. Now, can you lift and spread both sets of toes? You can feel all those little muscles in the arch of the foot articulating to keep you right where you are. Drishti stays. Switch sides. Left arm under, left leg over. Find your seat. And then lift the front of your pelvis all the way up towards your sternum. Now, for some of us, that is going to look like a real tilt of the pelvis posteriorly. For others of us, it's just going to be a feeling of a lift. So are there muscles right here under your belly button that you can engage just a little more? Nice and switch. Right arm under, right leg over. Stay here for three breaths. Full inhale. Last one, switch sides, last time on the left. Get to where you're going, receive what's there in the pose, and then stay for three of your breaths in and out. Nice, last one in, both feet to the mat. Standing leg raise on your right, grab for the knee, grab for the toe, or grab for a strap. Open up to the right, slowly take your gaze to the left, one drishti point at a time. Flex your lifted foot. Nice, now can you start to bring that right hip down to meet the left? Yeah, it takes a little bit more of an external rotation there if you can feel it. One more breath. Come back into center, airplane. Send your right foot straight back. Even level hips here as much as possible. Yeah, so you're going to have to keep that bend in your left knee. Press down so you can lift up. Half moon. Keep your breath moving. Find some vinyasa with your breath, even in these poses where we're standing still. Inhale to lift. Exhale to pull into center. One more like that. Feel the lift. Pull your belly button in and lower both feet to the mat. Standing leg raise on the left. Knee, toe, or strap. And then open to the left, gaze to the right. Once your drishti is set, allow your inner drishti to kind of do a little body scan from top to bottom. Where might you be able to get a bit taller? Now use that awareness to pull your left hip down to meet the right. Keep your hips right there. Come to center airplane. Your lifted knee is facing down toward the floor. Retract your shoulders onto your back. Open your chest. Half moon. Yeah, and our bodies, most of them, at least mine here, wants to go ahead and lock out that knee right away. See if you can bring a little bit more bend. Nice. One more breath. Both feet to the ground. Inhale, extended mountain at the top of your mat. Dancer pose right side. 
Catch the inside of your right ankle, soft part of your elbow faces out with your thumb toward the ceiling. Place your focus on one point and get out of your drishti. <laughs> Lift your chest. Pull your belly button into your spine. Switch sides. Dance it on over to the left. And that could be one fluid movement, stopping for an extended mountain in between, whatever you need. Just get there and make the transition work for you. You've got three more breaths on this side. Nice sticky drishtis. Last one. Both feet to the mat. Inhale, extended mountain. Take tree pose on your right. Foot anywhere from the floor all the way up to the top of your thigh, anywhere but the inside of the knee. So see if you can, from your heel all the way to your toes, avoid the knee in all of that space. Because so what we want to do here is press into center. And the last thing we want to do is press on the knee joint. Nice adjustments. Press down, lift up, express however you wish. Close your eyes and we'll take two more breaths. One more, both feet to the ground. You can open your eyes, take tree pose on the other side. Press into center and then express. What would it feel like? What might it look like to take tree pose all the way to your fingertips? You've got your hands at heart center, expand the chest and upper back. Can you pull the shoulders back? Very nice, close the eyes, two more breaths. Both feet to the mat, inhale, extended mountain. Exhale to fold, halfway lift, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Right side triangle. Take up all the room on your mat as you step forward. And then whenever the foot doesn't get exactly where you want it, pick it up and put it there. Create your triangle with as much length on both sides of your body here as you can create. So here especially, you might take your mind's eye up the whole right side of your torso from your hip to your armpit and see if there's a straight line there. And for most of us, we're kind of curving down toward the floor a little bit. So press down into your feet. Find a little bit of lift. Yes, just like that. One more breath. Side facing wide leg forward fold. Take your hands to your hips. Have a fold. You choose what you need here, an inversion, some movement side to side, or some stillness and a fold. Even here in this slightly wider legged forward fold, we have that same action happening in the pelvis. Front of the pelvis is closing, back of the pelvis is opening. If it still feels like there's a little bit of crowding in your lumbar spine here, take your heels slightly wider than your toes so we can really exaggerate that pelvic tilt. Nice. Get complete in your movement side to side. And on an inhale, rise all the way to stand. Namaste, front facing forward fold. Place your hands on your hips and hinge forward. Now, if there's a line that you like taking here, take it down close to your low back, just so you can really feel where your hips are in space. Sometimes the hands are really helpful for the proprioception. The brain doesn't quite know where we are, especially when we're hinged over like this. 
Press down in both feet. Twist your triangle. Left arm down, right arm to a T or toward the ceiling. Notice here whether or not your hips have moved and then make any adjustments as needed. Maybe take a slightly shorter stance, but press down into your feet. One more breath. Chaturanga on your exhale. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Left side triangle. Step it through. As long of a stance as you can make. So your feet here are like the two bottom vertices of the triangle, right? So the longer you take between both feet, the wider the base of the triangle is. And then the better chance you have of making the top of the next triangle, which is your left side of your rib cage here, as straight as possible. So the lower you are, the easier that length is to find. Press down, find the lift for one more breath. Side facing wide leg forward fold. Can clasp your hands behind your back, take a bind here. Little bend in both knees. So you can access pressing down into the floor. When we lock out our knees, that energy gets stuck. All that energy we could be pulling up from the floor doesn't even make it to our hips. On your next inhale, use your strong core to rise all the way up. Namaste, front facing forward, fold on the left. Hands on your hips or on your sacrum just to know where things are and then hinge forward. And then you are your own best teacher here. You make the adjustments that you need to, to get those hips flat. I know for me in this pose on the left side, my stance is always way shorter than it is on the right. Notice what you need to do to accommodate the mobility available in your hips right now. Twist your triangle. Right arm down, left arm to a T or toward the ceiling. Notice the hips exactly where they were and take the twist from your chest. Press your thoracic spine forward through your chest. One more breath. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Roll all the way out to a high plank and slowly lower all the way to the floor. When you get there, locust pose number one. Press your hips down, reach back towards your heels. Nice, and then you've got lots of options here. You could close this locust by pressing your chaturanga feet down into the floor, balls of your feet connected to your mat. Reach forward. Yeah, one more breath. Reach forward, lift your shoulders, and lower. Take your feet side to side. And then we'll go for floor bow, two of them. So one on each side if you'd like, or two with both feet. Grab for your ankles, squeeze your knees together, and press your shins all the way back. Flex your feet here at the top. Yeah, so if I were to press down, you want to press back up into me. Yeah, use your big toe mounds. One more big breath. Lower all the way down. Right cheek to the mat. Take your feet side to side. Floor bow number two. Opposite foot or both feet again. Squeeze your knees together. Send your shins back. Let the pressing of your shins going back be where the work is here. Let go of anything that's happening in your shoulders. 
One more breath. Lower all the way down. Left cheek to the mat. Feet side to side. Place your hands at your lowest ribs. Upward facing dog on your next inhale. Rise. Downward facing dog. Breath in. And out. Come on down to your knees for camel pose. One camel. So shoulders over hips, hips over knees. Hands in your imaginary back pockets. Chest moves all the way up toward the ceiling. Press the heels of your hands into your sacrum to retract your shoulders. Now use the heels of your hands just to press a little bit down on your sacrum to find a little bit more lift. So you're essentially taking your thoracic spine and pressing it up toward the ceiling. On an inhale, tuck your chin and come out. Sit back on your heels. One breath here. Bridge pose. Swing your feet all the way around. Set yourself up flat on your back, knees to the ceiling. Now set up your feet here just the way we always do. Feet on 12 o'clock. Hips width distance. You might even take your arms down by the sides of your hips and feel right where your feet are. For most of us, we tend to think our hips are a little bit wider than they really are. Nice adjustments. Press down, rise up. Bridge pose number one. Stack your heels here directly underneath of your knees. Nice. One more breath. Lower all the way down. Breath in together. And out together, bridge pose number two, press down and rise. Place all the weight here into your right foot. Let your left foot float up toward the ceiling. Flex your foot, press it up. Replace your feet. Put all the weight into your left foot. Take your right foot up to the ceiling, flex it. Press through. Can you lift your hips here just another inch? Nice. Replace your feet, hips to the floor. Breath in and out. Three more back bends. Bridge or wheel, you decide. On an inhale, rise. Stay here for five, four, three, two, one. Lower down. Breath in and out. Number two, rise on up. Feet on 12 o'clock. Notice where your toes are here. Nice. And then bring them back in towards center. One more breath. Lower down. Breath in and out. Inhale, rise. Last one, biggest one. Bigger breath. Stronger gaze. Maybe you lift your heels here or lift your toes. One more, fill up. Exhale, lower all the way to the floor. Supta Baddha Konasana, soles together, knees wide. A hand on your belly and a hand on your heart. Notice the quality of breath. Probably a little different than it was right before we started those wheels. So reorganize right here. Fill up completely, notice the pause. Exhale completely. Notice that pause. Dead bug. You grab here where you need to to keep your sacrum on the floor. So that's anywhere from the bottoms of your feet, maybe the backs of the thighs or the front of the shins. Rock side to side for happy baby if that's where you want to go. Feet all the way to the ceiling. Let's experience stability. Bring your right leg halfway down to the floor. On your exhales, switch legs. You choose the pace. And add right here, if you need some support under your sacrum, place your hands there. 
if it would help to place your palms into the floor for some more support, do it. Pull your belly button down into the mat. Yeah, and then right here, experiencing stability maybe is something different than you usually do. Shift your vision. Take your feet all the way up. Exhale, lower them 30 degrees. 30 degrees more. Bring them down toward the floor. Hover above the mat. Lift your shoulders. Take a look. Send them back up. Listening ears on. Bring your feet all the way down to hover two inches above your mat. On an exhale, lift them 30 degrees. On an exhale, lift them 30 degrees more. Bring them all the way in. Hug your knees to your chest. Abdominal twist. Knees at 90 degrees right over your hips. Challenge your knees to come no closer to your face than this. And you go side to side, opposite elbow to opposite knee. Whatever pace you want. Whatever pace feels like it's challenging you. But also keeping you in that space of I'm experiencing stability here. So rather than just a bunch of ab exercises, this is how you create the container to take all of the work we do here out into the rest of your life. The things that allow you to stand taller, the things that allow you to move faster, the things that make you more flexible, two more on each side here, whatever that means for you. Don't cheat yourself. And then hug your knees, rock back and forth, We'll all meet in boat pose. Rock all the way up. Feet on the floor or lifted. Hands behind the shins for support or lifted. Chest lifted. Nice. Now pull the jawbone straight back towards your neck. One more breath. Hug your knees into center. Right side half pigeon on your back or on your belly, your choice where you take it. Keep your right foot flexed here. It's gonna keep your knee in perfect alignment, so no bending or twisting. And then as you start to set up here, if you feel like maybe your hip is kind of hanging out in space and would like some support, it's a great spot for a block or two. You're very welcome. And then see if there's something right here that you can let go. There's some holding in your shoulders. Maybe some tension between the shoulders. You've got two more breaths here to figure out what it is you're getting rid of. Yeah, now get rid of it. And let's switch to the other side. And your choice on your back in that figure four shape or on your belly in traditional half pigeon. Extend your back leg all the way behind you. So there are definitely places where we want to take that like 90-90 position where the front knee is at 90 degrees and then we do the back knee here as well. And that's just another pose. What you're getting here by extending that whole back leg is that extra stretch through the right side hip flexor in the front. On your next exhale, see if you can let go just a little bit more. Start to feel that stretch all the way up the front of the leg.
press up and out. You can take yourself through a down dog or just bring that right leg all the way around. We'll move to seated single leg extension. So before you fold here, take whatever kind of bend you need in your knee, a little one, a big one, enough that you can make some connection between your low belly and the top of your thigh. On an inhale, lift, exhale, fold. Create your long forward fold back here. So it's almost as if, and you may be able to feel this, that you're pulling the center of your chest forward towards your toes rather than rounding forward and trying to get like the top of your head to touch your toes. And those of us that are really bendy flexy and find this easy, go ahead, give yourself that little bend anyway and start to press through the heel and then press your sitting bone behind you. It's gonna increase that stretch. So there's still something to be had here. Switch sides, left side seated single leg extension. Add the bend, take the lift, and then fold from your hips. You might find over the next exhale or two that that bend slowly starts to disappear a little bit. And that's the name of the game. There is no end goal. We're not trying to get our foot completely down to the end of our mat. We're simply seeing how far it can go today. Release your foot, seated, forward fold. Legs together at the top of your mat. Inhale to lift and exhale to fold. Again, as much bend in the knees as you need. Most of us find here that with both legs forward, a bigger bend in each knee is necessary. Now, can you create that feeling in your pelvis here, the same as you did in the standing forward fold? So the front of the pelvis kind of closes in on itself and feel the backside open. If you're not in a space that you can feel the backside open, you may not be sitting on the front side of your sit bones. So tuck your pelvis forward, like you're spilling the bowl of cereal towards your toes. Yeah, and then see what is to be had there. Release your feet, tabletop or reverse plank. Plant the whole sole of each foot into the floor. Fingertips towards your heels, lift on up. Get your chest as high to the ceiling as you can, your hips as high to the ceiling as you can. One more breath. Lower all the way down, fish pose. Place your block between your shoulder blades lengthwise. You can always place your elbows behind you as well for a more traditional fish. And then lay back like a mermaid on the beach. You've got options here for the legs, so choose what feels right for you. We can have knees to the ceiling, soup to bottom legs with the knees out wide or legs out long. We 
Notice here how you've got that little back bend going on. So what tends to happen in the body is we feel that the lower back gets a little bit crowded. If that is so, lift your hips an inch, tuck your tailbone towards your heels, and then replace your hips to the mat. Roll to your right side to release your props or your elbows. And then let's get upside down. You know the menu of choices. Handstand or headstands come to the front of your mat or take up some wall space. Shoulder stands, waterfalls, however you want to get your feet above your hips and your hips possibly above your heart. Shoulder stands and waterfalls, stack your heels directly above your hips. Nice, and if you've got your triceps to the floor here, press them down. It's gonna add a little bit of stability to that base. Maybe take some pressure out of the neck. A few more breaths here for those in our full inversions and then make your way to a child's pose. Shoulder stands and waterfalls move to plow if you'd like. Bring the toes down behind the face to the floor. And then take your arms out long on the mat, one vertebra at a time. Roll down to your mat for a supine twist. Hug your knees into center and drop them to the right. Friends at home, I invite you to dim your lights. If you've got a cold eye towel or something nice prepared for you in Shavasana, go ahead and get that prepared. Hug your knees to center and take them to the left. Bring the knees all the way back to center, Supta Baddha Konasana, soles together, knees wide. You've all got a cold eye towel. Feel free to place that anywhere you'd like. And then use your Supta body here to create your Shavasana. Tuck your shoulders up underneath of you. And we'll take two clearing breaths together. Inhale, fill up through your nose. Exhale, let it go. And another like that. Shavasana, legs out long. I'll share today's passage from Melody Beatty's Journey to the Heart, titled Heal Yourself. Infuse healing energy into yourself, into your being. For too long, we've been attracted to things that drain us, exhausting our body and depleting our soul. That time has passed. The world is a spa, a nature retreat, a wealth of healing resources. 
Pour Epsom salts and essential oils into your bath. Sit quietly by a tree or in a garden. Walk around the block in your neighborhood. Light a fire and awaken that darkened hearth to glowing flames and soothing warmth. Rise from your bed early in the morning. Open the curtains and watch the sunrise. Feel the sunrise. Let it infuse you with its message. Let it energize you and invigorate you and fill you with life. At day's end, return to the window or step outside and watch the sunset. Absorb its changing colors spreading out beyond the horizon. Feel how it changes the earth and all that it touches. Pet a puppy, stroke a piece of velvet, listen to a symphony. Absorb revitalizing energy until you can hear your voice and hear your heart tell you what would feel good, what would bring peace, and what would bring you stillness and joy. Before long, doing what brings healing and joy will become as natural as it used to be to do what drains, tires, depletes, and exhausts. It isn't enough to draw near to the light. Absorb it into you. Let it charge you and change you with its energy and its power. Healing is all around you. Wherever you are, whatever your resources, healing, energy, and joy are there. Begin to deepen your breath and bring some small movements back to your body. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Roll out your wrists and your ankles and make your way toward a full body stretch. Fingers in one direction, toes in the other. Hug it into center. Bring your knees to your chest. Give yourself the biggest hug you've received yet today and rock over to your right side for infant's pose. Send yourself a little gratitude for making the choice to show up, to do the work, and to make time for something that brings some of that healing energy, and joy to life. Press your left hand into the floor to rise to a comfortable seat. Eyes closed or drishti settled right in front of your nose. And on an inhale, we'll reach for the ceiling, get nice and tall. Exhale, hands to heart center. Press your thumbs here into your chest so you can really absorb the vibration. And we'll end as we began with one ohm together. Big breath in. Thumb knuckles rise to forehead center. We bow and acknowledge each other. Thank you for showing up and creating joy with the rest of us. Namaste. Great class, yogis. Questions, comments, feedback, you know where to find me. Um, any props or mats that you borrow, just leave them up here on the floor so I know which ones need wiped down. And I would love to talk to you after class about some of those workshops we have coming up or our upcoming access training, if that's something you've ever thought about. Watch your eyes, and I'll see y'all out front. Thanks for coming. Thank you to our online friends. See you next time. Have a nice evening.